Okay, so I think we've all had this collective sinking suspicion that something's gone horribly wrong between Olivia Rodrigo and Taylor Swift. And I think I've gotten to the bottom of why. This is really juicy. There's like insiders leaking stuff to Reddit and... I don't know. The drama is just boiling. And I, for one, am here for it. Before I jump in, I just want to say all this information was collected by an anonymous person on the L chat. You can read it on page 695 of Taylor's thread. Shout out to that person. If you come and find me, I'd love to buy you a coffee because you did a great job on this. Secondly, I just want to say I love both these girls so much. I'm not on anyone's side here. I'm just reporting what I found. So Swifties or Livies, please don't come for me. I'm pulling for both of them. Let me set the scene. It's spring of 2021 and Olivia is blowing up. Driver's license is doing great. Deja Vu is doing great. She's releasing singles, music videos, and everybody's really excited about the new ingenue on the scene. Olivia has always been really public that Taylor Swift is a huge inspiration to her and she's a huge fan and everybody was super excited when they finally got to meet and take some pictures together at the Brit Awards. Plus, we got Taylor being super supportive and doing stuff like posting Olivia singing Cruel Summer to Instagram, and she even commented on one of Olivia's posts and said that she was proud of her. She also sent Olivia a heartfelt letter and a ring that was a copy of the love ring that Taylor wore during the Red Era, but then things sort of started to shift. Olivia drops Good For You in the third week of May, and then shortly after that, she drops the entire Sour album, and it's breaking all these records, including some of Taylor's own records. Now, this might not have been planned, and it might not have been intentional on Taylor's part, but just after Sour comes out and is doing great and breaking all these records, Taylor releases a vinyl of Evermore, which bumps Sour from the top spot. And then someone on Reddit starts making some interesting predictions that actually all come true. On June 19th, someone posts to Reddit, claiming that Taylor has demanded publishing rights on Deja Vu. Now, it's not public information that Taylor is going to be credited on Deja Vu as a songwriter. That happens in the future. But they say they'll circle back. Lo and behold, Olivia does add Taylor, St. Vincent, and Jack Antonoff as co-writers to Deja Vu because Cruel Summer supposedly sort of inspired part of Deja Vu. This person comes back around and says, remember, I told you this was going to happen. And people are saying, how did you know this was going to happen? And they say... Either I have friends on Taylor's team, Olivia's team, or they know through lawyers, which is pretty interesting. They also say that Olivia was pressured into doing this, and someone says this is a PR move, and they say that's absolutely not true, and they do claim this was like a mean girl move from Taylor to Olivia. The insider goes on to say that Olivia's team didn't want to fight Taylor and her fans at such an early point in her career. Now, this actually cost Olivia millions of dollars in publishing royalties. I have more on this, but it's just too much to fit into one video. So you guys have got to follow for part two. Also, if you like this content, I've got an entire episode on my podcast about Olivia. So check that out. There's a link in my bio with links to the podcast. Bye.